And so with that said, Irene is at her sister's 80th birthday party. So we have Irene's sister, <laughs> Sue, if you'd like to come up. Good morning. All right, now you can hear me. Yes. Holy crap. Um, any announcements? Donna? Uh, crop Walk is in two weeks. It's on October 2nd in Greenfield this year. If anyone is interested in walking, please see me. Um, anyone is interested in donating to the Crop Walk, uh, you can see Jen Uncles, myself. Um, it's for a very worthy cause to raise money for food for people around the world as well as locally. Do you have any questions? Carol? Our frozen breads will be in this Thursday instead of next Thursday, and we made $507 to go towards our steeple. Nice job. Oh, yeah. The other thing that's a ways out, but John said, let everybody know Kenny, Carol, John, and Judy are going to try to run Halloween night out front again. So, if anybody would like to donate bags of candy, I'll put them in plastic downstairs for that night. Thank you. Carol, um, those breads, do we come by here on Thursday and pick them up? or? You can arrive with the little. Or you'll deliver five hundred dollars worth of bread. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, they can go in the freezer. Oh, okay, yeah, that would be great. Um, you think some of these can go in the freezer and then be picked up on Sunday? Yeah, no problem. We'll take care. Okay. Any other announcements? Flowers in the altar are given today uh, by June Rosenthal. A loving memory is of her husband, Jim. And let's see. There's no more announcements. We'll start the service with the prelude. And it's called Aqua Marie. I thought that was a color. <laughs> <laughs>
Thanks, Anthony. That was beautiful. Um, get, we've been giving Anthony a little bit of a chance to get to the other console. Just got to tell you a quick little funny story about John. Uh, yesterday, I met up with Reverend Will Sensum. If you remember him, he used to be at the South Deerfield Congregational Church, and uh, he was in town, and we went out to breakfast yesterday. And, we ate so much, uh, we decided to take a little walk. And so we went out for a walk up to the elementary school in South Deerfield and then back around. And, you know, we were talking church stuff and like that. And, you know, so how are things going in Sunderland? And I said, I think pretty good. Next thing I know, I'm walking by the driveway in front of Greenfield Savings Bank and the guy revs up his truck to aim right at me. It's John. Right <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that, that made a good impression of, with my other pastor friend about the, uh, the moderator aiming his truck right at me. Um, but with that said, let us now <laughs> turn uh, to our, our hymnals, our red hymnal number 353, Lord, I Want to Be a Christian, for our opening hymn and candlelight. Of our forgiving God 
to share the news that ours is a faith where divine mercy defines the contours of God's justice. Strengthen us, O God, through our worship to follow the way of Christ and to be an ever more merciful people. May we now share in the singing of the glory of God. Um, 
are you are you in preschool yet or anything? In kindergarten, okay. So as you guys get older, um, school starts to give you quizzes. And quizzes are like, you know, the teacher will teach you something, and then after, you know, you've learned all these lessons, the teacher wants to know how well you've learned. And so they might give you a quiz, and they might ask you to do some math questions or spelling questions. And say you're having a tough math question, you're not sure, and you kind of do one of these, and you look over at your neighbor's paper. Do you think that's good looking over at your neighbor? No, okay, that's like stealing their work. So you don't want to cheat in that kind of way either. Uh -huh. And if you're trustworthy in little things, says the gospel today, you can be trusted in bigger things. And so even though you guys are young, you know, the message of the church, the message of Jesus, the message of the gospel is that we try to, you know, give you those lessons that when you're trustworthy in little things, because your word matters, when you're trustworthy in little things, hopefully we can build up and be trustworthy in more important things. So we're trying to get that message across that we should always try to be honest with other people. We shouldn't try to steal or cheat. We should try to be good people in general. And that's what Jesus is going to say to us, and that's what we're going to say in church. And, and I don't know, but I bet you Mrs. Field is going to kind of get something like that across in your Sunday school too. So guys, whatever you do, um, have a wonderful day. It's a beautiful day, and have a great week at school too, okay? All right, thanks for coming to church today. And our special music today is Laudate Nomen Domini. All right, there we go. Bluetooth, it. Is that part of the hymn? Continuing progress against 
uh, this disease. Are there any uh, prayers that you would like to uh, share from here in the congregation before we hit the yellow sheet? Yes, Jenny. Just pray prayers of thanks for these cards because I'm really I think it's it's hard to invite people to church. I mean it, it it's it's embarrassing. It's almost like asking someone on a date. It really is. And I did invite my neighbor and she came and you know it was hard for me though. But this is going to be much easier because it's more like they can think of it on their own. They don't have to see my if they don't want to go. They can't have to go. And I can just write like hey it'd be great to see you. And then it's not like I'm asking them on a date. It's like we're having a cool thing and they are invited to come and they cannot come if they don't want to. So I'm um, thank you for you guys for making this happen. I didn't really do anything to make this happen. So and thank just you. Just ask the first break with all this date talk. Oh, I know. <laughs> Where's everyone's husbands, right? <laughs> Same place. Uh, <laughs> do you have any prayers, Gail? Thank you for sharing that. Um, anything else anybody would like to offer? Do you have any prayer requests, Gail? Nope. Okay. Then let us turn to our yellow sheets, remembering we're just using first names. Let us pray for Alan, Alice, Art, Barbara, Betsy, Bill, Bonnie, Carrie, Cheryl, Cindy, Denise, Doug, Evelyn, Frank, Jeff, Jimmy, Jimmy John, 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 June, June Kathy, Kathy, Lisa, Lisa Martha, Martha, Mary, Mary Joe. Melissa, Melissa, Michelle, Michelle Prue and Bart, Bart, Cheryl, Steve, Steve Thelma, Thelma Vinny, Vivian, Vivian and Ron, Ron Wes, Wink, Wink, victims of violence everywhere, everywhere in the world, those, those affected by natural disasters around the globe, and, and we pray for peace on earth. And then we have just a few moments of silence now in the midst of our public worship uh, to say to God those things that uh, really need to be kept a little bit more private. So just a few moments of silence. Faithful Savior, whose mercy is offered to the just and also to the unjust, help us to render our priorities in life so that we may be better able to imitate your mercy and also your compassion. Help us to see the difference between self-righteousness and righteousness. Let us be confident in our faith while not needing to condemn others to make ourselves feel better. Let us share the blessings of the gospel and an invitation to faith through how we live also through our outreach as this church. May the joy, the hope, and the faith that draws us together in Jesus, may that grow stronger today amongst us. May this be how we grow the church rather than by threatening God's judgment against those who choose to believe differently than we do. May our faith help us to heal the brokenness of the world. Instead of adding to separateness, may we bring people together, to bring people together to restore creation in that way. Bless our learning and also our doing. And hear the prayers that we bring before you at this time, whether localized or silent, or even just deep down felt in our hearts and souls. Answer them as you alone know best. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And may we now share in the prayer that Jesus gave to all of us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
through 13. And then Jesus said to the disciples, There was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was squandering his property. So he summoned him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Give me an accounting of your management, because you cannot be my manager any longer. Then the manager said to himself, What will I do now that my master is taking this position away from me? I'm not strong enough to dig, and I'm too ashamed to beg. I decide what to do, when I am dismissed as the manager of people, so that people may welcome me into their homes. So summoning his master's debtors one by one, he asked the first, How much do you owe my master? And he would answer, A hundred jugs of olive oil. He said to him, Then take your bill, quickly sit down, and make it only fifty. And then he asked another, And how much do you owe? He replied, A hundred containers of wheat. He said to him, Then take your bill, and quickly make it only eighty. And his master commended the dishonest manager, because he had acted so shrewdly. For the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of dishonest wealth, so that when it is gone, they may welcome you into the eternal home. Whoever is faithful in a very little is faithful also in much, and whoever is dishonest in very little is dishonest also in much. If then you who have been if then if then you have not been faithful with with the dishonest wealth, who will entrust you with the true riches? And if you have not been faithful with what belongs to another, who will give you what is your own? No slave can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and wealth. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be accepted to you, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. I've been going down to Bay State Medical Center in Springfield for 34 years now as a pastor. And I don't think in those 34 years I've ever, ever, ever visited there there hasn't been construction taking place. And this past week, I went down to Bay State and the main entrance road that I've always taken, well, it was blocked off with more construction. And I didn't see any signs telling me where to go. I didn't see the detour signs. Or I, maybe they didn't even have a sign, but I didn't see anything, so I missed it. But just a little ways down the road, just a few feet down the road, was a, another entrance. And I thought that was where I was supposed to turn. And so I turned down that road. Now, the, the usual main entrance, it takes you by that parking garage at Bay State. But this second one, it takes you directly into the parking garage. And so as I approached, there were a couple of attendants there. They were dressed in their red uniforms. And I was wearing a shirt and a tie. And one of them asked me as I pulled up to this other road that goes directly into the garage, do you have your badge, doctor? And I said, I don't have a badge. And then I went on to tell them that I thought this is where I was supposed to turn and that I'm not a doctor, I'm a pastor going to visit a patient. And people can be so nice when you tell them that you're a pastor. So she let me go on through, I guess, into Dr. Park or something like that. But she did ask that I don't park in the actual garage building, but that I go through the garage and there's a parking lot outside on the other side. And I said, no problem. I was just glad to be able to go through. And as I'm trying to do this, another red vested attendant now inside the garage says to me, Oh, doctor. And I said, hey, I'm not a doctor. I'm just here uh, as a you know, pastor going to visit a patient. And the people at the other end of the garage said that I could come through here, go outside again. And this other person told me, you don't have to worry. You know, don't worry. Don't go outside. Go inside. I said, the other person just said, don't worry. Just say a prayer for me. And I said, <laughs> uh, that's, okay, I'll say a prayer for you. And, and as I drove away, you know, I said, doctors don't drive blind green fiestas like the one out in the parking lot. And she made me laugh because then she said to me, pastors don't drive blind green fiestas either. <laughs> so I'm going through the garage and I go park my car, my lime green fiesta, and then I go make my visit. Afterwards, I come back out from the visit. And as I'm leaving the garage, there's nobody behind me in the line. So I see her off talking to somebody else, probably a real doctor about where to go and all that kind of stuff. I waited. And then I yelled out her name. I don't want to say her name because I don't want to get anybody in trouble if they ever see this or whatever. But I yelled out her name, and I'm terrible with names. So I yell out her name, and I said, I just wanted to say thank you. And she was so grateful that I remembered her name, and I took the time to stop and to say thank you. 
And the reason I share this story is not to encourage employees to do what they're not supposed to do. Let non-doctors go into the garage. Or for drivers not to do what they're not supposed to do, which is drive into that garage. The reason I share that story is about kindness is offered and kindness returned. I really, really appreciate that they let me park in that garage. And I made that wrong turn, and they didn't have to let me go in. They could have had me go out again and go searching around, but they were very kind. And I wanted to let them know that. And I said, that meant an awful lot to that person. Just, you know, say a prayer for me. And that meant a lot that I would actually remember her and say a prayer for her. So maybe this helps us to better understand Jesus' parable of the unjust steward. Because it's a parable that involves wrong actions. But the parable is not about the wrong actions. The parable is using the wrong actions to get a message across. Maybe if you were here last Sunday, remember the, the parable that one lost sheep. And we said, what about the 99 that are lost in the wilderness after you go looking for the one? And we, we were talking about the fact that people must have been scratching their head and wondering, what is Jesus getting at with this kind of message? And today's parable, I think, is equally strange or even more so. A company manager is just terrible at his job. And we don't know from the story if it's just because he's completely incompetent or if he's stealing. I kind of get the feeling he's stealing. And he gets fired when he gets caught. And plus, he's not a sympathetic character. He admits, you know, to being lazy. I, you know, I can't dig ditches. He admits to being proud. I can't beg. And he can't come up with any other way to make a living besides digging ditches or begging. So he's just not a really sympathetic character. And so this terrible employee does what comes to him naturally. He cheats. So he's been probably stealing from his boss, and now he steals again. And when the boss finds out the first time that he'd been stealing, he wants him, he fires him. The second time the boss finds out that he's even stealing more, he commends the dishonest steward for actually stealing even more from him. But again, those who are listening to Jesus' story they must have been bewitched, bothered, and bewildered by this account. The guy got fired for being dishonest. When he gets even more dishonest, the owner turns around and says, that was pretty smart thinking. <laughs> so if you're of a certain age, and if you like jazz like I do, if you really like Ella Fitzgerald like I do, that last phrase that I use, that bewitched, bothered, and bewildered, maybe that may have set off some bells inside of your head. Maybe triggered that voice in your head. Maybe and then you at least ask, well, where have I heard, you know, bewitched, bothered, and bewildered? And, you know, I think Jesus' parables are supposed to do that. I think they're supposed to rattle around in our heads. They're not supposed to be memorized and so that you just kind of do it on automatic. They're supposed to rattle around in there and make you think. When, um, when you know, when you teach a child the Lord's Prayer, you can say the Lord's Prayer, but you have to say it all of these years. I bet you can say the Lord's Prayer, and while you're saying the Lord's Prayer, I bet you could, you know, quilt a quilt. I bet you could cook dinner. I bet you could, you know, walk a dog. You could say the Lord's Prayer without thinking about it. And then it just becomes words. It don't mean anything. Jesus' parables, they're supposed to rattle around inside. They're supposed to make you think. They're supposed to make you scratch your head. They're supposed to make you say, what did he just say exactly, and why did he say it? They're, they're sometimes so strange that as they're rattling around in there, you have to pay attention even if you don't want to. And I imagine it would have been even more pronounced if we were the people who were actually around Jesus when he first gave those stories for the first time, and they must have been wondering, what in the world is this carpenter from Nazareth talking about? What in the world is he talking about? Because, you know, we put Jesus, now we have Jesus, every time we think of Jesus, he has a halo. We think about Jesus of 2,000 years of calling ourselves Christian and building beautiful sanctuaries to his name. But imagine going back in time and hearing the story for the first time and Jesus does not have a halo. Jesus doesn't have a church. Jesus isn't uh, Christians following him. And this Nazareth carpenter gives the story about someone who's caught stealing, then steals some more, and then he got fired the first time for stealing, and then the second time, he, the manager, the owner, says, good job. But when that happens, when you've got to stop and think about Jesus, 
Jesus has a chance. The Word of God has a chance. He's grabbed our attention. He isn't speaking the language that we would expect of a person sent from God. He's confusing, and that confusion makes us think and rethink. And you know, when Jesus comes, and when Jesus is even now amongst us, he is not what a lot of people would have expected of God. You know, a carpenter. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Feet dirty, sweating, doesn't make a lot of sense. You know, Jesus going through all of these towns, preaching these kinds of words, it wouldn't have made a lot of sense. And so that strangeness, that must have been a way for Jesus to get into their heads and to get that message that this is a little bit different than what you're going to be used to hearing. And so when that happens, that bewitched, bewildered, and be, you know, uh, be, I'm sorry, bewitched, bothered, and bewildered, it starts bouncing a ride inside the head. And I think it boils down, this whole gospel boils down to one statement based on the deceptive creativity of the dishonest steward. And we read, the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. Jesus recognizes that when it comes to money, people can be extremely creative and even deceptive and even heartless because it's money in their pocket. I, you know, you guys got to be probably like me. You get all of these messages coming over the internet and your emails and everywhere else. They, they, you know, your annual subscription. This one just came in this week. So it, it happened. I'll get more of this coming week. Your annual subscription to Dell Services has been updated for $450. If you do not wish this to be processed, call 1-800. I'm going to take your money anyway. Or your PayPal account has been charged $450 for your recent Amazon order. Again, call 1-800 take your money anyway. They, they get you. You know, did I have this automatic renewal? Did I forget about that? Do I want to pay $450? Did I place an order or somebody stealing from my Amazon account right through PayPal? And they, they get you to think, and if you call that number, you're, you're in trouble. Because as soon as they get you on the other end of the phone, you're in trouble. But people can be so creative in their dishonesty. People can be so energetic in trying to steal dishonestly. And so Jesus that's not something new. The method may be new, but it's not new itself. And Jesus is watching this, and Jesus sees how people can be so creative in the world of money. And Jesus says, look at how creative you can be. But wow, he says, if you can be that creative in that way, why can't we be just as creative as children of light? If we can have that kind of energy to go steal from someone else or take someone else's money, why can't we be that creative, energetic, excited about sharing a postcard or sharing an invitation to come to this place where we can be all together as the children of light? Jesus knows we can do it because he's seen us do it in the world. He says, do it here for the church. So Jesus is talking about investing ourselves fully in the changes that need to take place to make this a better world. Religion is not only about surviving here and then getting up to the glories of heaven, which I believe in, but religion is about making this world better. Jesus is out looking and watching everything around. He says, if you can do that there, you can do that here to make the world better. Do not settle. We don't have to live in this kind of world. We only have to live in this world if we allow it to be that way. So if you have a chance to make a difference, if you have a chance to stand up for someone who is oppressed, if you have a chance to stand up for someone who is bullied, if you have a chance to stand up for someone who has nothing on their table, if you have a chance to share the gift of faith with someone else with a, a little postcard, then Jesus says, do it. Use that kind of energy that we see all around us in the world and say, oh my God, use that kind of energy to be the children of light. So may we rise to the challenges that we face in the world and our faith so that we never, ever settle that we dare to believe in and act towards building a better world and that we live up to Jesus' expectation he calls us the children of light. We can live up to that. Jesus knows that we can do it, but do we know we can do it? I think that's the message of the unjust steward, as strange as it may be, let it rattle around in your heads and let us try to be the children of light. And for these things we pray in Jesus' name, Amen. Our hymn of closing today is Red Hymn number 29. Now thank we all our God.
Thank you for coming out and joining us for worship on this absolutely gorgeous sun, uh, summer Sunday. It's still summer, um, and I do hope the rest of your day is just as nice. I'd just like to throw in a little plug if anybody's interested this coming Saturday is a chicken barbecue at the Hatfield Church. There is a flyer on your bulletin board here. If you'd like to uh, place an order, all the contact information is there. I just want to throw that out uh, for you as well. So let us now have a benediction, and then following benediction, we will join together in our congregational response. God has delivered and blessed us here as this congregation. God will assist us every day as we are open to God's grace. In this community, we care for each other and we pray for one another. As we intercede for others and they for us, it also draws us closer to Jesus. So let us seek to be faithful in all things, great and small, acknowledging that in all we do, we represent the gospel of Jesus. We strive to be generous stewards of all of God's gifts, and we are grateful for all of God's blessings in and through our lives. So may we now go forth to love and serve the Lord in all we do, among all whom we may meet. Amen.